Look out. Footy's back. G'day. I'm Bruce Duell, the flying doormat. Wait, no, I'm not. Kind of wish I was, though. What a life that dude has lived. <laughs> I am James Clems. I'm the host here of the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things footy. And joining me for the Midweek Madness Show. I love the Midweek Madness Show. We get a journo on, a big J journo. This week, we've got big J journalist Lockie McCurdy to talk swans and giants, which is very fun. And we've also got a couple of nuffs. These guys, weirdos, lunatics, dinguses. Ding guy, perhaps. It's the stats boy over there. Absolutely. Uh, could you go, could Carden get Bruce Dool in their retro kit? That'd be cool. Could he just make a comeback? I Surely think... he could still just fly fly in the pack still. That'd be pretty cool. Bring Cooter back. Bring them all back. Bring every old player back that Carden's ever had. Sticks, bring him back. This... <laughs> We're just naming players yeah, now. I, this... I thought Jim would be into this. Me naming Carlton players. <laughs> I don't mind this. Yeah, <laughs> Let me cook for a second. We'll, we'll come back to this in the actual show. And over here as well, it's the uh, social guy, Leo. What's yeah. going on, Leo? Not much, Jim. First midweek madness show, and all I just want to do is just kiss the badge. Just oh, the guinea Jack badge. Awesome. Awesome. I'm actually, I've got the 95 Blues logo T-shirt on today. Nice. I'm enjoying this one. Well, they actually earned it this week, you see. They actually beat somebody since I bought it, so good job oh, yeah, by then. True. Yeah. I've still got the big sticks throwbacks as well. But anyway, <laughs> 40 years back, uh, make sure you've checked out the AFL Today YouTube and all the social channels as well. There's plenty of other stuff going on. I think I had to step in for Alex for the uh, power rankings this week. You did pretty well, I think, yeah. Some people got a little bit angry. That's but how at the works. same time, people just pretty sure angry. that's the entire point of it. Yeah. <laughs> <You see? laughs> yeah. Collingwood fans having a sook about Jack Gidevin. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> anyway, let's do it. It is the Midweek Madness Show, so that means news ticker, ticker, ticker. <laughs> Sam Reid retired, Stats Boy. We talked about did. this with our very good friend, Lockie McCurdy. He's up there in the Swans. He wrote the story today for codesports.com. Good inside you? info from him, yeah. Very interesting stuff. 15 years, which is pretty, just blows my mind. Um, I have one of the best comparisons I think I've ever come up with on this show about watching Sam Reid play, so you better listen yes. later. Uh, won the flag. 2012. Yep. In 2012. Yep. 181 games across 15 seasons is – I feel like that's actually difficult to do. It is. Right? It's hard well, to stand It's, it's hard to stand I'm not trying to have a go on him because every time he came back, they're like, this guy's good again, and then he got injured. <laughs> He'd play so like, like some weeks. You're like, he yeah. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Build around him. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Chaos. And then it sort of, he pings another hammy. So he was coming back through the VFL, wasn't he? And, yep, yep. Uh, kicked four goals in the last couple of weeks. I think he was an emergency last week, actually. He's actually had, he's had a yeah. really good year and then he just got injured again, of yeah. course. Yeah. Sadly for him. That sucks. Uh, so we talk more about Sam Reid with Lockie McCurdy. So check that out. Listen on a little bit later. Yep. Um, another retirement. Razor Ray. Now, Leo, you are our... Resident, resident umpire. umpire. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one that can talk Boundary about it. Boundary umpire. <laughs> that still counts. I threw this one out there in the office earlier. Is Razor Ray the goat? Is he your goat? I think he's my goat. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Like, to be honest, I don't know which umpire is better than others. But in terms Darren of Goldspink. Sure. Who? <laughs> <laughs> is that my dad? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Razor. I think just what he's delivered to like the footy media. Like he's actually giving an insight into why decisions are made. He's the way done that they a lot are, this year, I'll which is that, yeah. we need way more of. We need like because footy fans got no idea what's happening. Like so the average footy fan has no idea. Is it the entire point of an umpire is to never be seen or basically heard, right? Like you're there just to like. That's why I don't like. You're meant to be literally in the middle. Just yeah. we want nothing from you essentially. If you don't notice I'm, the umpires, it's a great game during Simple the game. Yes, the fact that Razor Ray has always had like a little bit more of an ego than perhaps than some of the other yeah. umpires. I appreciate it because I'm all like I'm all about just stir it up, just go full Bob Marley. We're going to stir this up, right? And Razor Ray does that better. But I think you're right. Like he comes out because he has like a hint of a personality, unlike a lot of other yeah, ones. Yeah, they put him on shows and things. Like it's that. like all right, explain the rules, and he's usually pretty good at that. Yeah, and I think some other umpires they try to explain them, or even actually we've seen like the schedule maker at the AFL. Yeah, came up and be like, I don't know how to speak good. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> And just like you can see him, he's like uh, Gar uh, yeah, Garth in Garth Wayne's, Wayne's World. world. Yeah, yeah. When Wayne isn't there and he's just sitting there going, ah, <laughs> that's the AFL schedule, dude. And a lot of these times, like the umpires can be a bit like that, where yeah. they're just kind of weird nerds. God bless you, but weird well, yeah, nerds. Yeah. Razor Ray at least is kind of like a bit, check it out, I'm Razor Ray. This is how it goes. He's so got yeah, a, he has his name rules. written on his boots. Uh, I wrote down he's got 380 games so far. He's going to be the 10th uh, most games for umpires. Three grand finals, 31 finals. Pretty good. There's a few yeah. uh, umpires around him that haven't had grand finals, so they obviously have trusted him for a fair few years there. So, yeah, fair enough that he's your goat. Yeah. Yeah, who's your goat? 
Oh, I've got to be Matt Stevick. Most grand finals, 11 grand finals. I've umpired with him once before. I've only really? umpired one ever game, and it was with Brett Rosebury and Matt Stevick, two AFR umpires. Does it make a wish? Yeah. Never laugh. If it was make a wish, I tell you what, I, I, I don't think was I'd it, be. Was what, it the kids with two hairy arms? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they're like, oh my God, we need to, no, we need it, to throw stop, this kid He's already bone. dead. He's that would be the saddest make a wish thing ever. I don't think. I'm like, oh, I want to go on umpire. Okay, no, thanks. Four foot two in it. <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh but Razor Ray, what a legend. Um, hey, for Europe, thank you to be much. honest, though, look, now now that we've got four umpires on field, I actually, I love that I don't recognize the vast majority of them. I think that's mm. good. I think that's a good thing, yeah. I think it's good. Mm. But at the same time, we've had some absolute shocking howlers this year. We're like, oh, better remember that. And we have actually had the guy who had a couple of those howlers. Uh, it was actually revealed, I think, last week. I don't think we talked about it on the show. Oh. Uh, the guy who was in charge of, like, that Carlton Frio game and also, I think, one pri- the week prior, there was another howler and he basically got dropped to the VFL for, like, a month Ooh. after, like, the sort of cycle of where you're sort of assigned sort of rolled around. He played one – I think he umpired one more week and then went, all right, back to the twos there, Palo. And he's like, no, I did screw up. <laughs> oh, I, do. I, re- I respect that, yeah. So it's, you know, pretty smart, I guess. But either way – Good on you, Razor, right? Outside of that, some other news. Tom Papley. This is one that we don't Brutal. actually hit on with McCurdy um, because we've sort of we hit on a lot of stuff, actually. Uh, but Papley, there's not much to sort of really dig into this beyond the simple fact that it really looked like he hurt his ankle. Yeah. And he did. It did uh, look bad, didn't it? So it was like, was it a five, four to six week injury? I think they tested, yes. right? So with that bye week, I think that's that, very handy. Yeah. As we've said, I think we said this this time last year, when you have that bye, Players can go back from injury. They, they weren't rushing back. He might even miss the first week of finals yeah. because you'd, you'd still, obviously, finishing on top, they're going to have another week. So I reckon he might miss the first week of finals and then come back after that. But they're saying he's going to be back for finals. Yeah, if you're not cherry ripe, mm. you're sort of like, if you do back your team in to like win that qualifying final, you then get another yeah, like a week, week off, off yeah. Like yeah. before a prelim. So uh, I don't know. It's, an, it's The same sort of thing goes like if Carlton can stay in the top four with TDK, like yeah. that extra week off mm. does really help. But uh, Papley is a tough one because I think he's had a strange year, right? And Up and down, of, yeah, for his high standards. When he sort of gets on a little bit of a roll, he's like one of the just best forwards in the game. Yeah. Simple yeah. as that. And it doesn't feel like he's quite hit that role yet. He still year. kicked uh, 30 goals, which surprised me. So yeah. he's, so, had, a, he's mm. had a decent month, I think. Yeah, More so, or less or Charlie than Charlie Cameron, do you know? Because I think Charlie uh, Cameron's been a bit down this year as well. Yeah, definitely. I'll have a quick look. I'll have a quick Charlie look. definitely has. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, slightly more. So 28 for Charlie this year. 28 Compa- for Charlie. That's really bad for his standards because the last three years before that were all over 50. 50 so, now, so that's uh, that's wild. Not the year of the small forward. No, man. no. Oh, there's some other small forwards out there. Corey, uh, what is it? We've got Matt Paul Owens. No. Matt Owens. <laughs> no. I love that Matt Owens has been copying from Collingwood yeah. fans, and if he played for Collingwood, he'd be leading their goal. That is a great, which yeah, I that's love a great that. one. It would he actually? Yeah, yeah he would, because Bobby Hill's leading their goals, and he's, he's got like twenty six or something. Yeah. What's and Owens? Got? Like twenty eight. Yeah, so. oh, Owens, Owens is better, is better than, than Charlie, Charlie Cameron. Cameron on, uh, I didn't just say that. No. <laughs> Owens might be on twenty six. Let's, let's get him up to uh, Papley, and then you can give uh, Alex a bit of crap for always being better than Papley. Always definitely has the biggest head out of all. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Other injury news, Maximus Gornicus. Uh, we actually had this on yesterday's, Super sorry, Coach. Monday's Supercoach mm. with Drew Jones from Fox Footy uh, talking about Max Gorn attempting to come back. I think the run, the training run is today. Uh, they posted a video if people want to check that out on Supercoach um, AFL. He looked very ginger, but. We'll, we'll see, see what happens. So You're not talking about his beard. No, no. Oh, bang. There we go. Racist. <laughs> uh, but then Gorn also has like one more chance essentially to sort of. Uh, Put his hand up, which would be interesting to see if they actually do bother. It is a really big game for both those teams this I week. Well. Was it Melbourne play. GWS? Right? Yeah. yeah, I, I reckon huge. he might play just because he's like the skipper in the back of his head's like, oh crap! If I play, I can probably lift. I can lift the boys. But then again, he, he could stuff himself up even more, and then have to go off at half time or something. I don't know. So I reckon he might play though, which is wild from only just a couple of weeks ago that he was here. Yep, I'll pay that. I want to see him back just to help my super coach team. Have you yes, still got him? Yeah, oh. got him on the bench. No, Ned Moyle yeah, outscoring Moyle though. Because yeah. my, my man Ned Moyle is crushing it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Eric Hipwood got fined for tunnelling. Now, this is a thing that Alex was yelling about at, well, because he was at the game, uh, the Sydney-Brisbane game on the weekend. And we've had an explanation. Have it's we? like, oh, it was like, what was, there were, didn't result in an injury and stuff like that or something like that on Blakey. But he could. But there was also another thing where it's like, 
we've had explanations where it was like in the contest or not in the contest, and that's the problem. Mm. Mm. And this was kind of in the contest. It's like it's still tunneling. Yeah. It, it, what are we doing? So wait, the the rule that what their explanation is saying until he breaks his neck. Oh, don't worry, it's just a fight. Yeah. Like that he literally chaos. could have broke. If if you take someone's legs out, that is the most dangerous thing in every sport. In you the got, air. happens in rugby, in happens in a lot of it. other sports. You cannot do that free. in basketball as well. It wasn't even it a wasn't free. Even free. The umpire was like, "Oh, that was cool. <laughs> just let them score." <laughs> he a goal. Did a flip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it again. <laughs> do it. Yeah, that was wild. I, I, we can get into that later. But that's that's a joke that he only got a fine. I think. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. Uh, speaking of fine, Zach Butters, the most fine man in the AFL. We talked about We're this not talking about his looks. Over th- <laughs> yeah, because Rosie takes that. Yeah. Rosie gets <laughs> he's, the, he's, the, he's the good looking one. Zach Butters <laughs> is the one who's uh what do I call him? Rosie um Ramsey Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> Zach Butters, what is it, thirty seven thousand two or thirty six thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars yeah. or something. Uh, versus taken, the, the Draymond Green title of the AFL. Well, yeah, or to, the Toby Green. He's taken over the Toby Green man. I thought it was Jai Simkin who had the most fun. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised because Jai yeah. Simkin's dirty. Yeah. But the problem was a North fan. Yeah, too, yeah. I, he's dirty as. He cops, what, an extra $10,000 10, of fines this week for two separate incidents. Mm. And one of them, <laughs> one of them was the $7,000 is just a bump off the ball. You're like, what? Yeah. yeah. Seven grand for that? It's literally just bumping off the ball. Nah, he's got enough money. Got to harden up. <laughs> got to eat some concrete. What are we doing? <laughs> eat some grass. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Footy's <laughs> gone soft. <laughs> 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 Jim's been bumping people in the head. I just like Jim bumps people in the head in the office. I've it's got brutal. this, got this in my pocket at all times. But he's gone. <laughs> but he's gone soft. Uh, but then the other one was very, very strange. And I think I don't often agree with Kane Corns on anything. I think his eyes are too close together, and he's got a too big bulbous head. But same, it's so weird how much he looks like his dad. You know? Yeah, it is. you know, look, I understand familial like uh, recognition and all that. So it's just weird. Um, <laughs> but he gets fined an extra three grand for contact with an umpire where he's in a contest and the umpire falls over his ex- like and it's his an leg accident. that's mm. moving out of the way he's he trying a, to get out of the a road player pushing on him in that direction and too. his foot comes off the ground and the umpire falls over it like what are we doing here because umpires are clumsy he gets a fine hashtag free butters yeah <laughs> don't mind that <laughs> uh, other little bits there were some rumours floating around that the Tigers weren't stoked with Dusty just going, hey, yeah, uh, i got to go to New Zealand for a bit. Um, they were happy for him to go there with some uh, personal family leave because there's a lot going on in his family in New Zealand. But then he, they, they were like, just be careful with your back, Dusty. You, had some, you said you had some back spasms and that's why you're out still. Then he just goes and plays golf for a couple of days and uh, they, the people, the media was saying all morning that they weren't happy and then Richmond have just come out and said, yeah, he can do what he wants. And Leo's not happy with that, actually. Richmond have <laughs> got to stop letting Dusty walk all over. Oh, he's just playing a bit of golf, mate. No, but it's not about, it's about, like, he can take leave, that's fine. But, like, it's clear that he's running on top of them and it's not going to help their club in the future. How did it help Gold Coast with Gary Ablett? Well, they almost made finals. Almost. They didn't make finals. Key word is almost. They They have not made finals. Gary Ablett was their captain and he didn't even train. But, yeah. Yeah, then Dusty's, yeah, what's going on there? Is he going to come back? That's the big question. It helped Son of God's bank account. Yeah, yeah. And he got a cool house up there. Yeah. Pretty sick. That's true. Anyway, good stuff. Midweek winner of the week. I'm going to give this to my beloved Carlton Blues. I'm wearing a throwback <laughs> right now. Something else. Oh, okay. Okay, and Alex. For the, no, for the kit. We're talking about throwback jerseys. Yes. Jerseys, as you want to call them, if you, if that's your vibe. Uh, <laughs> I love a collar on a footy jersey. I think it's fantastic. It doesn't make any uh, sense to have a collar. zero but sense I love now. it. I love it. It's olden days. It's old timing. Because like it's not like it's sunny. You need to pop the coal. Like they're, cricket. they're all going to sit MCC after the game. That's why they. Yeah, they, they're, 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 they're going to go to the bull ring have a few yeah, beers. Just so go and actually drink out a glass yeah. of the yeah. It's like I'm sick of these plastic pots, man. <laughs> no, would you imagine just at the gym you see all the Carlton boys after the game in the bull ring, just in the dark pits of the bull ring? So they're, funny. they're the midweek winner of the week though, because I mean we saw Geelong have the old timey uh, photo session oh, cool. as well. They look awesome. So basically, this also goes for throw this. The midweek winner is throwbacks. Yes. Yeah. The fact that we don't have like a completely – and I've talked about this before with um, NBA on NBA Australia. Throwback week is such an easy layup yeah. for every They would sport. sell a lot of kits as well. You'd yeah. sell kits coming out the wazoo. The yep. Carlton ones are absolutely already flying. Same with the Geelong ones, right? It's so easy just for the AFL to go, throwback week. Yeah, Let's do it. And because you can dig through each club's history, if you need clash, like people, oh, man, what about clashes? I I'm want sure to see them do the classic one. Guess what? You can do the classic one next year. It's the gift <laughs> that keeps on giving. Yeah. You've got so many different jerseys throughout your club's like history. Yeah, people like There's nothing saying that a throwback doesn't have to be like Carlton's awesome M&M ones from like 2006. Or well, something. lots of Carlton fans hated that. But I, I like that. I, love, I yeah. love it. It's a throwback. It's well, now like the Vancouver Grizzlies. It's like the yeah. teal Detroit Pistons. 
what was you know sort of rank then is now cool. I'm exactly, all about it. Exactly. So I think you can go back as far as you want. Like you think about some of those Geelong ones, like some of the weird thickness of the hoops. Yeah, right? that's cool. Well, Stuff North, like for example, the our away team, the our away kit. Did you have an orange kit? That is the worst kit in the history. <laughs> when we were sponsored by <laughs> Orange, it was just all orange, <laughs> rude, disgusting. It was. You look at it and you it would burn your eyes, but. No, any kit for that, thank you. Any kit <laughs> but the that. best part is this is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Because we can each year we go retro jerseys. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Sweet. You just rotate Let's rank them. And away you go. We just like start ranking Perfect all these us. retro jerseys. As simple as that. The NBA have gotten onto this because they've got one million t different sorts they of jerseys. So jerseys. The problem is they've gone too far. Yeah. And no one knows what jersey is what. Mm. And it's like it's not none of them are special. They have like ten jerseys. And so if a year, you do yeah. one retro awesome round jersey, they become special. And they I love the idea of putting the collars on them again. It looks radical. I'm just like taken back to like Tommy Alvin flying down the wing of the MCG or Princess Park. You just want more mud as I'm well. I'm just all about the mud. <laughs> this week I'm just mud and collars. Let's go. And what about the dudes, horse, horse dudes Power Rangers? Brickies. I love that. Yeah, brickies. <laughs> but anyway, midweek round the, of the week is I like that. throwbacks. Yep. Nice. All right. Should we go to McCurdy now and do some Yenars after or Yenars first? What do you reckon, gentlemen? I reckon the people want McCurdy. So right. People want McCurdy. Yeah. Let's throw to Big J journalist, friend of the program, the man with the hair. Lockie McCurdy. All right, and now we welcome on a very special guest, friend of the program. He's up north there. He is the Swans GWS guru, some would call him. What is this, the repeat offender number one, I think? Lockie McCurdy. Yeah. What's going on, Lockie? back. Well, I mean, thank you for having me first off, but I, I just do want to clarify, we're only up north if we're talking about the, the Vic-centric AFL. I mean, swans are flying, giants are back. I think maybe you guys are down south. I think that's the way we should put it at the moment. Probably, yeah. Everyone's yeah. up north for us except for, yeah, Tassie, obviously. Yeah, Tassie sucked in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, that's kind of the vibe, though. I mean, like, that's what we love bringing you on just to sort of get the vibe of what's going up, mm. going on up in Sydney because I think when we last spoke, the Swans were absolutely flying. Now they've fallen in an absolute heap. <laughs> wow, a heap. Bro. <laughs> GWS were actually, I think, it was like it's a bit of a reverse because I think last time we spoke, they'd mm. sort of hit like that real rough injury patch and now they've come good a little bit and uh, sort of cruising along. So, I mean, it's kind of like swing, a little bit of swings and roundabouts. The Swans are clearly, you know, still on top of the table by a couple of wins, laughing there. But I want to hit on the thing that you you actually wrote a really good story, as you do, the Code Sports, <laughs> the new sports network, all Absolutely. the good stuff. Yep. We brought this up on Sunday's show about how the Swans keep losing close games. And you've written an incredibly long and detailed article about this, talking to horse and everything. Uh, well, you know, getting some stuff from there, from horse about what happens in the finals. In the close games, yeah. Just explain it, because I'm an idiot. Just like, what's up with the Swans? Like, are they cooked? Are they just like do chokers have, when it comes to close games? What do are we doing a, here? Do they have a clutch problem? That's what we were talking about on the show, yeah. It, it's interesting, because I think there's definitely two lenses that you can look at it through. That you go, yes, they've lost three of their last four, so I think that is a concerning streak no matter how you look at it, especially this time of the year when you want to start building that momentum towards finals. So taking out the the closeness of the losses, I, I think it, it is naturally a bit of, con of a concern, especially when you throw in Kilda, who have been struggling this year. Um, but Freo Brisbane, obviously less so because they've been pretty good sides. But the combined uh, margin of their four losses this year, so Richmond, Freo, St Kilda, and then last week against Brisbane, is 10 points. Yeah, so well, in well. each of those games, I mean, in at least three of those games, they probably had opportunities to win the game. Uh, two, they definitely did off Logan McDonald's boot, which unfortunately didn't go his way. But we turn around those results one goal either way. And, and for example, the Brisbane game, I, I know a lot's been made of the, the Hipwood Blakey tunneling accident, if you want to call it that, because it looked pretty intentional to me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. if you want to take that accident where they scored a goal from, that's another six point turnaround where if that doesn't happen, the Swans maybe win the game. And we're talking about a team that's only lost to the Tigers. So it, it is a concern, I think, that in the games that have been close, they haven't been able to get a win yet because you need to be able to do that in finals. You don't you don't get these second chances once September come, comes around because their smallest win so far this year is 14 points against the Western Bulldogs at Marvel mm -hmm. Stadium. And even then, that was relatively comfortable. A few goals late kind of brought it close again. So I think it's something that they'll want to kind of correct in the coming weeks because they've got some really important games. Obviously, the Dogs this weekend, they got Port Adelaide and Collingwood. And they're three games which really should be quite close on paper. So they'd love to – obviously, they'd love to keep winning by 30, 40 points, but they'd take a bit of confidence that they can finally win a close one within a goal. Well, how about my contention that, you know, 
They're not clutch and they're flat track bullies. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, oh, I, just, I just came up with it right now. Says then. the Carlton supporter. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. I mean, it is weird though, though, when you win, like when the Swans are winning, like it is by large by margins, lot, yeah. right? They're actually and rolling, yeah. It is weird that they're sort of like, we obviously know that they have these first quarter blips where they just, mm. just take a while to get rolling and that's fine. Uh, because they do keep on winning, they are top of the table. Well, that's another wins. way of looking at it. If they just start well, they won't have to worry as much in the clutch. Yeah, possibly. I think that so, might be the biggest yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Like, how do you then just fix those starts, McCurdy? So uh, I think the really interesting thing is that it just feels like a bit of a lack of energy and pressure mm-hmm. combined with teams going, hang on a sec, we're playing the ladder-leading Sydney Swans. Let's try and match them for that first quarter. And it's like they're shocked almost every time a team does it because for the last sort of six, seven, eight weeks – They've spoken about it post-game. Longmire's addressed it. They've tried to address it during the week, but they just haven't been able to get get it going. And I think it's a natural thing that happens across the course of a season, especially when you've been flying and you have that sort of 13 and one start to a year. Of course, you're going to have to come down a little bit. But I think it's going to be integral in, in the next couple of weeks to go, okay, we need to put together performances that will work in finals now because... If you look at especially that Brisbane first quarter, you think back to the Geelong and Carlton first quarters at the SCG, you, you can't give up those starts in, in finals. You can't give up four or five goal leads. So I think we'll start to see a real shift in intensity in terms of, okay, this is the way we want to play come September. But unfortunately, it's come at the same time where injuries have finally started to hit for them as well. I also I love I think it's great for Sydney because they're like the inverse of Carlton who play one really great quarter every game yeah. and then like <laughs> and then just get... three shocking ones and yeah. it sucks. You'd rather like, that. You'd rather whereas that. like I'd rather be the Swans. Where it's like ah we just have a bit of a slow start going. Oh what you come to play little old me and, <laughs> and then <laughs> bang, bang, yeah. like, they just like smoke everybody. It's awesome. Um, but outside of this as well, I mean we've got two other little things in on with the Swans. I mean obviously Sam Reed retires. Mm. Uh, Incredible career, like an amazingly strange, Very weird injury one, yeah. struck, mm. wildly lengthy career. What is it? Fifteen seasons, yeah. for 181 games. That's right? just brutal, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and hasn't played since the 22 Grand Final, where he came in injured, right? Yep. So, uh, I mean, you wrote another article about that as well for Code. I mean, Sam Reed. What does he mean to the Swans fans and to that team? Beyond my favourite Sam Reid sort of anecdote being the fact that he got on that 2012 uh, AFL Live video game cover. I saw you post that. That how, I still how think that's one of the cover athlete. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was one of the more remarkable ones at the time. But it kind of just summed up because he had this prodigious talent, he, this marking mm. ability that everyone thought, okay, we, we've seen enough sort of 2010, 11, 12 that he's going to go on and and become a really important player. And in moments, he absolutely was for yeah. the Swans. I, I think everyone thinks back to obviously when you win a flag in 20. 12, he was integral in their run to the 2022 grand final, uh, but it was his ability to kind of play all across the ground. He almost was central to one of those guys who would just drop back and take marks on the goal line if the Swans had a six-point lead with less than a minute to go, something maybe they would need desperately at the moment. Uh, but there was a game, I think, against Ferrero, I want to say 15 or 16 or somewhere around there, where he actually saved a, a draw when he went back and, and took a mark on the goal line. I think it was 70 all. And it, it's those little moments that I think Swans fans remember Sam Reid for, that he just he had this incredible pair of marking hands that would barely drop anything. And he had his issues, obviously, with kicking and accuracy and then obviously staying on the field across the, uh, across the years. But... 2022 was probably his best year on the field. He was finally deployed as kind of a a second ruck alongside Tom Hickey and and being able to kind of then pinch hit and go up forward. And it unlocked the best out of him. It it unlocked a new energy in the way he played. He was getting across the ground really well. He was probably as fit as ever. And and he was having that consistent impact without having to kind of necessarily be the guy to to hit the scoreboard. So, yeah, it's a funny career. I think you're right in saying that, that he wins a flag in 2012 as this young up-and-coming key forward. And then in the next two years, the Swans bring in Kurt Tippett and Buddy Franklin. And then it's like, okay, well, what role is he going to play? And Mm. Even though there were injuries throughout that time, he, he found a really important way to to remain integral for a side for the best part of a decade and a half. I was trying to think about this. Like Sam Reed at his absolute best, it's like the second Japan Droids record. Celebration <laughs> rock. Like it's just joyous. It's just fists in the air. This is awesome. <laughs> this is great, yeah. I'm just hanging out with my boys. <laughs> we're watching Sam Reed. This is unreal. Like that's my entire vibe. I love Sydney Sam- fans love Sam Reed. I love of, Sam Reed. A lot of people like, like when Sam he was Reed. actually up and about, yeah. he was a fantastic footballer to watch. So it's kind of sad 
uh, to see him sort of hang up the boots after another mm. hammy. So, but yeah, crazy career in the end. Yeah. Bizarre. Mm. Otherwise, how's Heen Man going up there after his uh, one week off and became the uh, free Heeny uh, yeah, signs the, were everywhere at the SCG? Yeah, I saw that was pretty Juli- funny. Julian Assange apparently <laughs> of uh, the AFL out of nowhere, just persecuted, kicked into the Ecuadorian <laughs> embassy, no doubt. It's only one week, God now. <laughs> Look, I think he's loving being back and playing footy. I got a chance to chat to him before the Lions game and he actually said obviously there was a lot that happened around the tribunal cases and it, personally I think it looks even a, a bit more surprising given some of the, the bans and non-bans we've seen yeah. in the sort of fortnight prior um, post that. Uh, but he, he said he was able to look on the bright side a little bit of the ban. He um, His grandmother was quite ill, so he got to go back up to the Hunter here in New South New South Wales and, and spend a bit of time with her. He got to just kind of get a different bit of a, a bit of a different view of the game and, and really kind of see what was working and what wasn't for the Swans. And he was probably a bit quiet, probably by his own admission, uh, against the Lions, had a couple of goals, which he'd normally back him to kick that he didn't in that sort of third quarter. But, yeah, I, I think he's going to have a point to prove for the rest of the year. Obviously, there's all the stuff about the Brownlow, about the video that they put out, and I think everyone would go, look, the Swans could have stuff, done something a bit different there, didn't have to to go as formal uh, in, in that regards. But I, I think you've got a player who's so well-loved and respected. He's the first academy kid to come through the Swans as well, so I think that's why it really means something to Sydney fans that he was on this trajectory of going, oh, hang on a sec, he could win a Brownlow, the kid that's come through the Hunter region, come through the Swans mm-hmm. Academy and could typify success of footy in Sydney. Um, so I think that's why it probably meant that little bit more to Swans fans and he's always been our fan favourite. So while the the standing ovation that he got uh, against during that North Melbourne game when he walked around the touchline might have externally appeared a little bit maybe over the top and odd, I think it kind of sums up just how popular he is with this Sydney fan base and how much he's going to be integral to what they do for the rest of this season. Yeah, so his dad's going, yeah. that's why we get McCurdy on. Yeah, so you just usually go just Alex, but Rabbit and go, no, he's really good, shut up, he did nothing wrong. <laughs> and like, that's basically it. Like, that's the analysis. We get McCurdy on. Inside info, get, yeah. Get inside info like and you it, see yeah. how it goes. Very nice. Uh, I also loved, I think it was like that sort of combo of he and Toby Green sort of hanging out uh, after that, and the sort of uh, the story around that was kind was of a bit fun. of fun. Yeah, they were trying and to make a big article out of nothing. I think people that. sort of eventually just went, "Oh yeah, that's funny. That's yeah. right, I'll pay that. Yeah. That's good." Um, mm. Speaking of GWS, that was a good segue. See, Get especially right, when yeah. you call attention to the segue, yeah, it yeah, makes yeah, it, yeah, it, makes it even now, smoother. Just, seamless, yeah. seamless. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Uh, the tsunami is kind of back, isn't it? Like it's sort of. They've looked substantially better in the last what four weeks, essentially. Uh, do you think, what do you think there is sort of behind this for GWS? Like, and can they sort of make the top four, do you reckon, from here? Yeah, it's kind of back. It kind of isn't. It's It's been a strange one for the Giants. The fact that they're, they're winning games, but almost not in the way that they normally win games, which yeah. is, it, it's a really positive for Adam Kingsley because they obviously had that stretch of sort of two months where they really struggled. They obviously, they got the wind down in Geelong, which is proving really important now because it's kind of keeping them up in that top eight. And now they've got this stretch of three straight wins where only the Lions, are, they're the only other team that's won their last three straight games. So you've got the Giants slowly building momentum, which we saw how important that was last year. So the key is now to kind of get all parts of that tsunami back up and running because you, you saw against Gold Coast, while their attack looked good in stages, that they didn't get the ball inside 50 anywhere near enough. And they let the ball in from Gold Coast 66 times inside 50. Mm. And mm. that's just such a startling stat. Like everyone around the club is like, we, we can't let that happen. And the Suns and Ben King, they they were the ones who kind of let them off from their shocking kicking on the day because I, I think King finished, I think, three behinds, two out in the fools. It was it was yeah, shocking. Enough, yeah. And then down the other end, you had Jesse Hogan kicking straight. You had Toby Green kicking over the top of his head. Like they were just it showed the difference in class between the two teams. And I think that's where the Giants are slowly starting to realise, hang on a sec, we've got some really good players we can rely upon, but we've got some really nice young guys around them who are bringing the energy and bringing the excitement. So I think there is genuine belief that they can push for the top four. They've got an incredibly tough run home. I think that's going to be the real deciding thing that if they make the top four, you almost put them into that bracket of, okay, their top two, top three premiership contenders because they've got such a tough draw over the next five weeks that if they're winning four or or five of their next games, they're going to be hard to stop once September gets here. Battle of the Bridge Granny, Jim. Is that a a possibility? 
I'm bring it, bring it to the SCG, I say. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that, would actually be, that would be the one game where I would go, even as a Melbourne, that would be cool if that was in We would have like the world's largest amount of content just going, should we play to the SCG or yeah, not? Like, yeah, just nonstop. That, that would be great. Like Alex would just have a megaphone just leaning out every window he could find just screaming about how it should be there. That'd be pretty uh, cool. I love the idea, actually. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Here, I'm here for it. Uh, one, th I was going to say on this next question that Jesse Hogan, I think he's a part of that reason why they're firing mm. again. He was awesome at the start of the year. We're like, is he going to win the Coleman? Oh, two months of him doing nothing. And now he's, could he win the Coleman again? That's the uh, big question here, Lockie. What do you, what do you reckon? And what, did, what were the major reasons he was a bit off, do you think? Oh, I think it was just like the rest of the team. They just mm. weren't executing their forward 50 entries well enough. They weren't giving him a, enough of a look. But I think there's also a, a sense of, okay, some of the more experienced players have gone, let's try and see what we can do now. Let's turn this around a little bit. And you, you look at some of the key stats across the competition. Jesse's, I think, got the most contested mark, uh, most marks inside 50 in the comp by like, 15 or so over like the likes of Kerno and Langford and Mackay. So he's just such a dominant figure up forward that anytime there's a one-on-one -on -one in his direction, he's odds on favorite to kind of win it. And this, the Giants are, are really targeting him with their inside 50 entries. But I think what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is they're picking and choosing their moments a little bit better in terms of when to target him. Uh, they're, letting him have one or two, then they're finding a Toby Green, they're finding a Jake Riccardi, and, and then there's some of their smaller forwards like your Brent Daniels and, and Harvey Thomases who are, are having a bit more of an impact. And it means that Hogues can kind of sit up the ground a bit more. He's not having to work as hard down the wing because that's something we saw in that sort of six-week stretch that when they weren't getting as, as many points, when they weren't passing that 80 threshold, it was because Hogues was having to come down to the wing and try and take that big contested mark just to get that bit of territory in his team's favour. So I think it will be interesting to see how they get him through the next five weeks. He, he doesn't do well against Melbourne. I think he's only ever kicked one goal against the Ds in his career. Yeah. So he's looking Jeez. forward to, I think, having a, a little bit of a resurgence against his former side as well. That'd be Love interesting. It. Break out the pythons. Away he goes. <laughs> Just start flexing on Lever and May and Co. That'd well, be pretty fun. Yeah, I don't, I know you'd like to lock him down, as he said. That'd be interesting. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I guess, I mean, you hit on the uh, sort of tribunal stuff earlier about hanging man. Uh, and obviously we saw Toby Bedford go from mm. three weeks out to zero. Crazy. And, I mean, what do you think, like a team like GWS sort of look at the result of that and go, I think we got away with one here, boys, and then they go from there. Like, what do you think the approach is from here on out for teams to be like, what are we doing? Like, how? I think they're going, what are, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. What are we meant to do? Like, we're yeah. just challenging everything now here, right? We might have a shot. Like, it sort of just, there's so much confusion around the league right now. And I think Bedford sort of <laughs> plays into that a little bit too. So it's just a bit of chaos, right? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. I mean, the Bedford case is the perfect example where he and the Giants were so confident that he had done nothing wrong. Yeah. They went to the tribunal. The tribunal found that he had done something wrong and they didn't explain it well enough, which is the only reason he got off. But the Giants were still so confident that they'd done nothing wrong that they'd argued their case. But the next day they heard from the AFL, we saw the explanations go out to say, no, these are still dangerous tackles. It was only an error law. That's the only reason Bedford's kind of getting off. And it leads to more confusion and, and grey area than ever. I mean, we saw Bedford in the game against the Suns. There was a, a tackle, I think it was on Noah Anderson, and he kind of lowered him to the ground and quickly went, oh, hands up, uh, I didn't do anything. And yeah. Sir, sir, I didn't <laughs> touch him, sir. Like a lot of that, it's right? A, it's so awkward at the moment, yeah. Ugh. And I think you can see a bit of the difference between the tackle, that tackle and the Taranto tackle because he does release the arm. So I, I think in a way it's almost a really good highlight reel to go, okay, he probably didn't do much wrong against Taranto, but you can see what he did right in the Anderson tackle. So I think we'll start to see a bit more of that. But Adam Kingsley has spoken extensively about how they've had coaching experts in teaching, okay, making sure you release the arm if you're going to ground. Make sure you're looking at ways to limit that contact. So it's not like the players aren't taking this seriously. And I think the drop in concussions, the top drop in overall suspensions does show that. But I think there also just needs to be a, a bit of common sense applied and that there's – we're maybe overcorrecting at the moment for some of these tackles that once we we find that, we bring it back, find a middle ground, and then hopefully everything will feel sorted because I think it is important to try and stamp concussion out of the game, but penalising actions that have always been accurate, have always been celebrated and aren't really contributing to the concussion, I think that's where we kind of step over the mark a little bit. Absolutely. I'll play that. Yeah. Not bad. All right, well, put you on the spot. Five rounds to go. <laughs> 
Swans, do they finish on top of the ladder and where did GWS land? Cool. I've got Swans finishing top. I know that seems like a bold prediction. Two points clear, <laughs> two games clear, big percentage boost. I think they might drop one or two more over this next stretch. I think the Dogs game this week is an absolute danger game. I mean, they've just gone down to Geelong and um, got the four points down there. And then you've got a few other danger games as well. You've got Collingwood, who love coming up to Sydney and causing an upset. You've got the Crows, who... We all know what happened last year when they couldn't get to finals because of uh, a certain <laughs> yeah. uh, goalpost incident up, at Sydney. Yeah. So they'll be thinking about that one maybe a, a little bit about getting some revenge. And um, But there's there's just enough class there. They've got enough guys coming back that Haywood should play, Mill should play, Robottom's close to playing, that, that they should be able to cover for the few injuries that they do have, which is a positive, and continue their kind of positive streak at home. The Giants is an interesting one. I think at their best they could sneak into that top four and a uh, first v fourth uh Quali final, Sydney Giants would be fascinating be awesome. yeah, viewing yeah. just for the social media content alone. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I think a home elimination final is probably more likely for the Giants. They might, they've just got such a tough draw and there's obviously some, such a, a log jam around them that if they can get that fifth or sixth and get a home game, whether it's a, an Essendon, a Fremantle, or someone like that, depending on how results kind of plateau over the next couple of weeks. I think they'd back themselves in, but I think the Giants are the team that no one would want to play if they make finals. I think even the Swans, if they had to pick one team they wouldn't want to play, it's probably the Giants this year in finals. Ooh, I like well, that's, that. That's a good call, yeah. That's spicy. That is. That's why we get him on. He not only does it, you know, he's got the best hair in the biz. He writes some of the greatest <laughs> words you'll ever see on Code Sports. That's why we get Lockie McCurdy on. Thanks for joining awesome. us again, mate. No worries, guys. Speak soon. All right. How good was that chat with McCurdy? I told you, stats boy. It was awesome. You yeah. were there. What are you talking I, about? I, I, what do you mean? <laughs> I, I was there and I enjoyed it and I loved it. It was great. <laughs> All right. Let's do some yeah, nahs. A bit of midweek madness yeah, nahs for you. This one was from Alex on his sick bed. I don't think he's alive anymore. We should probably do a bit of a health check, but to be honest, nah. Uh, <laughs> has Dusty quietly quit Richmond? Yeah, nah. Don't yeah. No, I don't think quit's the right word. Well, he's in New Zealand. Uh, he, no, he's probably just using all of his built-up leave. All right, yeah. just, you know that's how it goes. <laughs> how it works today? I'm pretty the sure. Just said you got too much leave. You got to take. You got to take it. <laughs> if our players have a lot of leave, obviously then because the they joke. get like six. That's the joke, Stats. No, nah, I, I, I'm just trying to get my head around uh, all of this dusty stuff. I don't think I think quit, he's done. No, I don't think quits the right word. I just think he's like this just doesn't like care that yeah. much. No, they just changed his contract to part time. Simple as that. Yeah. Just, what, isn't that what uh, Jared Waitley said? Part time. Part time football. On One point yeah. four million. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It's a good point. That's a great gig though. Yeah. Part time footy. Part time legend. Part time legend. Because you're already a legend, <laughs> but now you're just playing part time. You sort of it's just the sort of the smooth out. It's the golden parachute. Maybe you're playing the um, New Zealand NZ AFL. There's a, there's a competition over there. Imagine he'd average sixty touches over there. <laughs> Maybe she's really getting into disc golf. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? Sure, again, what do you, yeah, my fi- I love this idea. Like, what does Dusty do in retirement? Well, he obviously likes golfing because he's been playing it this week. Uh, what else? He'd be, he'd be in Bali and Vegas a lot. Maybe. I think Vegas. Buying pubs. Buying bars. pubs, yeah. yeah. With da- with Dane Swan. Because doesn't he own the Albion or has that changed? Well, Dane, Dane Swan Albion? does, but maybe Dusty has a bit of a, a, bit of a coin, coin on that one. Go yeah, hang out with Libba. Yeah. yeah, where's his pub? Spotswood. Uh, Ascot Val. As- no, does he own that? It's Ascot Val. Val. And there's one in Seddon around the corner from my house. There you go. Nice one, Libba. I'm gonna go to that. We should Val. rank AFL players pubs. That's a fun. We should go. <laughs> Just do a pub golf. We should golf. do a pub golf. Oh my god! At <laughs> oh my god! Why have I not thought of this before? Why not? Because it's alcohol. Ah, what are you talking about? Where's a there is a week between the end of the regular season and the post season. What are we doing that week, gentlemen? <laughs> Mad Monday for, oh for boy. us. <laughs> AFL today does every oh AFL-owned pub in We should Melbourne. actually do that. What I if like there's this. one out in, like, Shepparton? No, it doesn't matter. Go on a Shepparton. Uber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying for that. Jim said he could pay oh, for we're it. We're ranking them. This is going to be great. Ranking the, the footy-owned pubs. I like who's, <laughs> who's pouring the best pint? Like, it's well, going to be great. Best Liber array says, of beers I'm going to go for Libba. Libba says one that he's very the good. coldest pots in Melbourne. That's what, that's what he's out. Uh, one in Seddon is very good. I went on steak night. Didn't mind it. Nice. <laughs> I like this. Uh, we have a. Uh, We're definitely doing that. Even if it's not filmed, we're just doing it. Anyway. Yeah, this could be an off season thing. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> team bonding, team bonding. Team bonding. Yeah. All right. The other one is we've got a couple more Yenars here. Hipwood should have been suspended for that tunneling incident. Yeah, yes. Nah. Yes. Yeah, that was definitely. that was brutal. Like it's not I said a football before, act. not a football act. He wasn't going for the ball. If it was a bump and he was on the ground, it would have been fine. If it he... was a genuine contest. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This was just taking a dude's legs out. 
The guy mm. was clear in the air. He had about four steps to like judge. Yeah. This is what they say in all the tackling. And it's like, oh, before you get to there, a you're going to judge. A reasonable yeah. player would. But dot, they didn't dot, put dot. that in for... I, oh. This is like, so he hit so this weird. at the end of the chat with McCurdy, right? About like the sort of chaos around the MRO and everything. Mm. And like, I think Robbo this week on like 360 and stuff was sort of talking about how it just basically needs another overhaul. Mm. It's like... I don't know if it needs another overhaul. I think it just needs very simple, straight up clarification mm. on most things. It needs to, like, like we've said before, like a pub test, like a random test. dude that is an AFL fan, like one of us. No, but then they're just, just going to side with their team. No, no, no. Or, or, yeah, no, but we're not. going to be like, oh, Cripps did that. No, <laughs> nah, look, see, right. I think I'm pretty impartial, <laughs> like, boys. Uh, anyone Cripps hooked someone off the ball. Like nah, Jim on it, fine. for example, he could be on it. But he can't do Carlton games. And That's if good. I was on it, I couldn't do North games. But at least yeah. you've got a fan that knows the game. It's like they don't know the game at all, the tribunal. Yeah. It's like they're just going they off the rules. They haven't played the game. They haven't played the game, I don't think. So, so when you actually look at the MRO, there are play, like former players and stuff and former umpires, right? But yeah. The problem is, them, it's actually, they've all been retired for a fair yeah, long, long time. I also now. think, though, I don't even think like Michael Christian would agree with these decisions he's making. It would be the AFL telling him, hey, yeah. look, we don't want a lawsuit. Let's ping everything that, with a concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't reckon he'd agree with the suspensions he yeah, that's true. Don't want to be the uh, you know bit of American football. I don't want to say an actual organization's name, but tell the truth. Tell the truth. <laughs> yep. You see that movie, Concussion? I have, actually. I have. I have. Harrowing, I have. Yeah, that boring is, that stuff. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, other yeah nahs. Essendon will make finals. Yeah, no. Oh, you put I this just did, I've done two ladder pred uh, predictors. They always change every time I do them, but both times Essendon are ninth. And another one, they're twelfth. But I think they'll finish ninth. Their percentage is they're twelfth. Yeah, I think so. That was a bit of a joke one. But ninth, I think they're going to finish. They have right. a really tough schedule from here. Let's analyze. Let's it. do it. Yeah, win or loss. <laughs> here we go. Essendon going up against St Kilda this Saturday That's at Marvel Stadium. Win, win. win. Essendon hosting Fremantle okay. the following Sunday. Frio at, at D the MCG. Frio are good at the G. I don't know where that one is. That it's at the MCG. Be. I had that a look before. The G? Yeah. That says Marvel there. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. It's at the I'll MCG on the I think the they'll win that. I'm no say confidence, loss. though. I'm going to say lost. Essendon hosting the Gold Coast yeah, Suns. Well, that. that's a win. Because yeah. <laughs> it's here, yeah. 28th parallel. Yep. yep. Essendon hosting the Sydney Swans. Nah, cooked. That's got to be a loss. Their last three, they're going to lose. Brisbane hosting the Essendon Bombers. Yeah, that's a smashing. In loss. the final That's round. a whomping, as Alex would say. So that's... I've got three wins, two losses there. That that should be enough for finals if they win three. Uh, maybe. This where's, is where's my, where's my ladder gone? Well, they're, very, they're eighth, aren't they? Very interesting to me. So at the moment they are eighth. How many wins are they on right now? So in they're terms of their actual wins and loss record, points. they are ten, seven, and one. Three more wins. Okay, with, with, well, should get it with the dogs, Melbourne and Hawthorne directly behind them. Two points behind them, stats boy. Mm. With those games to come, if you are only going to give them two or three wins, I think they have to beat Frio for them to make finals. Because if they don't, I've got thirteen wins in eighth, which is brutal. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be out of Port, uh, Gold Coast, and Essendon in that I, eighth. I think dogs will get in. Yeah, dogs. I don't know if it'll be for Essendon though. Mm. So, yeah, that Frio game is at the G. So, Google's are wrong. The AFL website has it at the yes. G. So, Marvel, the G, Marvel, Marvel, Gabba. I reckon they cooked, one. yeah. Which is funny because they, they've been top four, but anyway. That was a good win loss. I like yes. that one. Hawks of the best player culture. Where did this come from? I just put that in there because I didn't they even put this in. I put this in there because their social media, which Leo's been talking about all year, yeah, I finally jumped good. on it and I've gone. This is very funny. They're all on the same page. We talked about this on the Sunday show. The, part of the reason they're winning is because they're just having fun. They look like a local footy team, an under-14 team that go, we can't lose. We're just un unbelievable. Like, what do I thrive on, Stats Boy? Vibes. Vibes. Yep. I thought he was going to say chaos. <laughs> that <laughs> too. <laughs> no, vibe. uh, look, chaotic, chaotic vibes. Chaotic vibes. There we go. You got chaotic vibes. <laughs> That's how Carlton play footy. Okay? Just absolute chaotic <laughs> if you vibes. Don't, you don't thrive on that. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's going to be a heart attack. But the vibes for the Hawks just awesome. are immaculate. Yeah. yeah. I, like they weren't immaculate the first six weeks of the season. Obviously, winning helps, but they just—I think because you got so many young guys yeah. around the same age, they basically beat the pies because their vibes were better. Yeah, so, yeah. They, they, they're all gonna like grow up together. Yeah, like, it's, it's, a, it's a big oh, thing. Bruce, should, Bruce will be their like granddad <laughs> <laughs> like, by the time they're all. Bruce will be like eighty, still yeah. kicking like two goals in the sub or something. <laughs> Just give it to me, boys. Bruce is the sub forever yeah. until he dies. Look, I, I don't think we have the best player culture. I, I think, think you're we, up there. I think we have the funnest. I think yep. the best probably has to go to Sydney. Boring, yeah. Boring answer, but I think we definitely have the funnest culture at the moment. Fun is correct because I don't know if the Sydney one is fun. Well, Bloods. Bloods culture. 
Right, yeah, they're like, a bit more right, serious. Just, yeah, all right, horse. Ex- excellence. That's what you're yeah, all about. Cool. <laughs> when those hawks are like, how good's being a footy player? This is sick. Yeah, <laughs> not even in the in finals yet. We're just, know, we're just like, blowing it. It's like, like you're gonna win the flag, yeah. and everyone's just happy. I love it. Uh, that is, it's that's a. We could almost rank the teams in terms of vibes. We should of actually. the playing group, mm. and uh, that Melbourne might be last. one. We could probably do that in tomorrow's show, actually. Before Still we right now. get into the teams. All right. <laughs> Might need a little bit more prep. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll do it for the next one, yeah. All right, good stuff. There's some good Yenars. All right, let's do the Coleman and the Brownlow update because I think the Brownlow just got very, very, very interesting this past mm. week, Stats Boy. Yes. Uh, if you look at some of the predictors, obviously we had rough weeks for all of Dacos, Lockie Neal. Warner. Chad Chunley Warner. Yeah. And the Bont. All fairly quiet. Whereas Patrick Cripps went quapang yeah. He'll get a couple on the of ruse votes, and yeah. should at least get two there, you'd think. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have Gould. Whoa, rule. With that booming left leg, he's going to win a brown low. Like it's, Maybe. He's awesome. He is absolutely charging now. And now that Heaney, this is the thing. Like The umpires go, well, you've been rubbed out, so no votes for you from here, bro. Yeah? Well, he out. wasn't very good on the weekend either. But mm. yeah. Same time. Like you've been rubbed out. You're sort of out of the uh, equation. Yeah, so yeah. Gordon could just be snagging threes the rest of the way. Yeah. I still like him as a bit of a uh, come from the clouds yeah. candidate. I like that a lot. Yep. Dacos, I'm I'm worried about him. Very worried about yeah. that because I felt like that was a lock. Well, to a lot just of, come charging home, but the way they're playing, it's just kind of stinky. The last so. month as well, he he hasn't been that good. The AFL Brownlow predictor gave him three votes the other week when he wasn't good at all. Yeah. I think he's going to be yeah. He's going to he's definitely behind Neil Bont and Cripps. Uh, yep. So I, I think he's going to drop off now. Uh, unfortunately for Pisces. Yeah. So if we look at this other Brownlow predictor, Cripps is a few votes clear, they reckon, and I'm not entirely convinced. I that. reckon that's right. I yeah. reckon Noah Anderson is probably right there with Haynes, Dacos, Bont, Neil. Zerrett also probably has Sarong, a bit of a chance. the sneaky one. If the Bombers Sarong. actually win some of these games mm. and we've just gone and win lost them, yep. uh, mm. if they win some of those, Zerrett Zerrick. is a bit of a sneaky one to just go, hey, I'm going to ch- get us into the finals, boys. Jump on my back. Mm. He, he's, he's dropped off last couple of weeks, though. Isn't quite that t- type of player sometimes. Mm. I don't know. Be interesting to see what happens. Have you got anyone else there, Leo, that you wouldn't mind to keep an eye on? Not anyone else. I just think Cripps wins it from here, to be honest. I think he's been the one he's that stayed awesome. consistent mm. over the last sort of two months, whereas, you know, Bonds had a down game, Neil, Warner, Dacos, all have had down games. I, I think it's Cripps to lose from here, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. I don't like that at all. Sorry, Jim. Daryl Goulden's to lose, damn it. <laughs> to be fair, everyone that... You think it's going to win in the last like few yeah. years? They never win. They so never actually do win. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, the Coleman update. This one is very easy because it's just literally as they've kicked the goals. Uh, <laughs> Kerno should have probably over the last two weeks should have kicked some more. The three-time Coleman medal, medal winner uh, <laughs> Charlie Kerno has gotten a little bit shakier. Yeah. Just for the simple fact of like he could probably have at least five more over the last two weeks. Yeah, keeps definitely. rushing it. At least. Yeah. There was one that I think I was watching the so the Blues Ruse game. Uh, Carlton, I'd, I think, had just gotten down and just sort of started fighting back a little bit. He took a pretty easy mark, twenty five meters out on the sort of slight angle, and rushed it and completely he did it twice. Cooked it. He did, did like, it twice. What are you doing? Yeah. Didn't he try and snap one from like forty? Yeah, from a set shot. And he's yes, a booming he's kick. You're like, oh, I don't know. When I, he just lets loose, it's just like just. Free the Kerno. Yeah, just free. He's the still Charlie. four goals ahead in the Coleman though. So, so. here's fifty three. Jesse Hogan. He's charging the 49. last three weeks. 49. Yeah. How many goals has he kicked over the last month stats? Ah, uh, that's up. what I was about to check. Give me one sec. I'm pretty sure it's 5-4-4 four, 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 the last nice. like, uh, three. Ben. Let me have a look. Ben King's on yes. 45. Ben King should be on 52. Exactly. He's had so yeah. many shots. Talk he... about leaving some on the uh, side of the road. Max there, King has <laughs> taken his spot, though, for sure. Uh, my beloved Harry McFive, 44. Did, ha- did Harry Mackay give Kerno like, bad kicking this year? I feel like they kind of swapped. Well, at least Kerno's going to win. This is also no, 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 yeah. but like you, free, year, but, you're trying to say yeah, that they like, freaky Friday themselves, yeah, literally. right? Because Harry's been pretty active. They've both yeah, gone yeah. to pee in the Yarra, and it's like some somehow transferred their kip goal kicking. Kerno's prowess. losing his hairs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Harry, it's twin. <laughs> I was actually like the Harry sort of role is interesting to watch as well with uh, TDK out for the rest of the home and away season. Uh, it means you'll probably see more Mackay pinch hitting in the ruck. Yep. Yeah, you will. Uh, which means, not as fit. means it's probably better for Kerno's Coleman chances because yes. he'll just be a lot more one out, I dare say. Um, and it probably doesn't give Harry McFive much more of a chance to kick Harry McFive. This is also a very low Coleman race. Yeah, it feels low. like I don't know why. But like this time last year, they're all like around 60. 60, yeah, because even Larky Larky was on like 70, 70, yeah. Yeah. So that that's really low. 
And the J train, Jakey Waterman, missed last week as well, 41. He's going to kick 10 and then he'll be right back in it. So Let's go. I, lo- I believe in <laughs> you, J train. 10 of West Coast, well, that- nine goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Exactly. <laughs> All right, that'll do it for AFL Today. For today, we'll be back with AFL Today tomorrow for the Thursday team show. Uh, thanks to very good friend of the program, Big J journalist, Lucky McCurdy uh, from Code Sports. You go check out all of his great work on the Swans and the Giants, as we discussed, which was really fun. And thank you, of course, to the Ding guy here. We've got the stats boy, Liam McCallion. Thank you. And the social guy, Leo Mullally. Thank you, Jim. Good job. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, as mentioned, what do we got this week? We've got the goal on the mark of the week of the year of the week. Yeah, that's gone up already. Power yeah. rankings, all Power the good rankings, stuff. You can do some ones. of the warples. Yep. Yeah, why not? Yeah, nice. it'll be Sounds fun good. stuff on there. Opportunities yeah. are endless. I like that. <laughs> Subscribe star and like all of our shows, of course, on your podcast app. That's the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, which is uh, firing back up very scarily soon. Uh, and hold all tickets, of course, as well. Get around him like Dusty getting around a bit of disc golf. On my back. Uh, anyway, that'll do it. We'll catch you later this week, i.e. tomorrow, for the Thursday team show. More, well, for AFL today, that's it. Until then, look out for yourselves. Remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With sports today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.